Good evening, everyone. Gina here, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. So today I'm going to be bringing you guys a new series, and it's going to be a series that's going to be taking a long time to get through. So um, I opened up to you guys a few months ago and let you know that I do struggle with an addiction. I struggle with a food addiction. So I am in recovery currently for um, a binge and purging disorder. So um, the steps I've taken in my sobriety so far is attending Celebrate Recovery over at my church. And I just started a 12 step, um, step study, which is going to dive even more deeper in my recovery. So, um, I thought I would go ahead and share with you guys what I am doing every single week in my step study. So this is a way that I can document it on a video diary, if you will. Um, but also keep me accountable for actually doing the work in my step study and sharing with you guys. Just go ahead and hop into it. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you click that red subscribe button. Great Recovery is a Christ-centered 12-step program, and the goal is for you to get your life back. So whatever you are dealing with, it's your way of getting control um, of your life back again. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into it. Alrighty, so the first principle and the first step that we're going to be going over in step study this week and this and the principle that I'm going to share with you guys is all about denial. So principle number one is to realize that I am not God. I admit that I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. So step one, we admitted we are powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors that our lives have become unmanageable. So um, this first step is really crucial in your recovery process is to acknowledge that whatever it is you're dealing with, whether if you are codependent, whether you're dealing with a gambling addiction, a sexual addiction, substance abuse, you need to recognize that you are unmanageable in your own day to day and that basically your addiction has taken over your life. So at this point, you're needing to um, come to your addiction and say, I am out of control with my addiction and I no longer have power over my own life. So that is principle number one is the denial phase and realizing that you need to admit that you're powerless over whatever it is you're struggling with. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. Denial is huge, you guys, because a lot of times people are suffering with something and they have no clue that it's become the problem that it's become. A lot of people when they are dealing with addictions and if friends or family um, are approaching them about that, a lot of times they become defensive and that's part of the denial process. What's really crucial and something really important to understand with whatever hang up habit you're dealing with is fear is the opposite of faith and you need to take your mask off. And so I distinctly remember this phase in my recovery to where I had just had enough and I was sick of not having control over my own life. And it was an argument Chris and I had and I completely broke down and completely took my mask off and told him, hey, I've been dealing with this problem for 17 years and hey, I need help. So at that point, I needed to just let Chris know I needed help because it was to the point to where it was taking over my life. So um, that's the story for me when I decided that enough was enough and that I needed some help. I will never forget to that day. So today I am three days shy of four months um, in my sobriety. So I have not binged or purged um, in almost four months. So we are three days away from my four month mark and I am so excited about that. So I'm gonna go through our acrostic that's in our study guide. Now I'm going through uh, the Journey Begins by John Baker. So you can um, actually get these books on um, pastor.com or if you are um, close to a Celebrate Recovery near you, you can always go um, to the Celebrate Recovery meetings and pick up the books at the Celebrate Recovery meetings or any of the Saddleback campuses that have um, bookstores, you can pick it up. I'm gonna go through our acrostic and let you guys know like the meaning behind the word denial. So denial disables our feelings. They promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of destructive habits for we are slaves for anything that has conquered us. So basically you are a slave to your addiction. I would say that's, yeah, that's accurate. Energy lost, he frees the prisoners. He lifts the burdens from those bent down beneath their loads. Uh, negates growth, they cried to the Lord in their troubles and he rescued them. He led them from the darkness and the shadow of death and snapped their chains. He isolates us from God. 
alienates us from relationships. Stop lying to each other. Tell the truth for we are parts of each other. And when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. This is so good, you guys, because if you are an addict, if you're struggling with something, um, one of the main things you do is you continue to lie about your addiction. You continue to lie about your struggle. And it is just so hard to live day to day with such a heavy lie inside. So I, yes, totally get that. It lengthens our pain. God promises I will give you back your health again and heal your wounds. So I am currently in that process right now to where I am giving it all up to God and letting him heal me physically and emotionally. So that's where we're at. So um, what we do in our group is we answer some questions that are associated with the book. So I thought I would go ahead and just share like the questions and my answers to them because I'm, I'm hoping that this series can help you guys. So if there's something that you're struggling with, maybe it'll encourage you guys to go to a Celebrate Recovery of your own. But like I mentioned in my intro of this video, it's also gonna be a way to where I'm able to stay accountable for the work that I need to do as well. And I feel like God is calling me to share this part of my life, this part of my recovery with you guys. So I'm gonna share it with you guys every single Monday. So you will see this video uploaded every evening, um, every Monday evening at seven, because that's when I will be in my step study recovery meeting. So I thought it would be appropriate to post it during the time I'm actually in my meeting so that you guys can pray for me and you know leave encouraging comments if you would like and all that. So it's gonna be a Monday night series, 7 p.m. So we have a few questions that we needed to answer. So the first one is, what area of your life do you have control over and be specific? So I have a tight schedule all the time. I am very type A. I need to have everything scheduled. Everything needs to run um, streamlined according to plan. So if anything slips in my schedule, I literally like freak out. So I put that I have a tight schedule. I have tight control over my schedule when I sleep, when I eat, when I run, when I grocery shop. Um, also when it comes to food and food addiction, I have tight control over what we eat in our own home. Um, so I'm in charge of the grocery shopping. I'm in charge of the meal plan. So I am in charge of what we have. If we go out to dinner, I'm the one who picks where we go, etc. What areas of your life are out of control, unmanageable, be specific. So this is question number two. So I do have bipolar disorder, so I cannot control my mood swings. So sometimes I will wake up and I am just in a terrible mood. Everything irritates me. Um, but then the next day I could wake up and I'm completely fine. So it is very uh, challenging for myself as well as my husband to deal with these mood swings because sometimes I just can't like snap out of them. A lot of people will say, oh, well, just get yourself in a better mood. But if you haven't dealt with a mood disorder before, it's not as easy as saying, get into a better mood. But I do know ways to try to get myself in a better mood. So if you haven't seen my video about seasonal depression, you definitely should check that out because I share with you guys some ways that I kind of get over that like slump whenever I'm feeling in my low points. Um, so something else that I can't control is food around me. So if we go to like a family party or if we go to a restaurant, I can't control what people order. I can't control what people bring to parties. I can't control potlucks and all that stuff. I can't control amusement parks and like family friendly things. Like if I go to family events outside of the house, like I literally can't control what is there because um, it's not just about me. Like just because I have an issue with food doesn't mean everyone is going to have an issue with food. So um, that's hard too. Um, going into different situations to where I don't know what food is going to be there um, and the triggers that it might bring. But anytime I'm going to like a family party, I either a eat before I go, so I'm full and fine, um, or I bring things that I know that I can have. How do you think taking this first step will help you? I think finally admitting that I am powerless over my addiction is what's going to save my life, to be honest with you, because um, if I was to continue down this path, like this would be a really dumb thing to die from. So I think that me finally admitting that I have a problem is what's going to obviously save my life here. So admitting that I have my problem is definitely a game changer in terms of my recovery process. As a child, what coping skills did you use to get attention or to protect yourself? So as a kid, um, actually more in like my adolescence, I was a yeller. So anytime I had a conflict with my dad, like my dad and I had a conflict all the time. Um, and anytime we had that conflict, my 
I would get so angry that I would just yell. And um, that's something that I did as an adolescent and something that I have done um, as an adult that also I need to work on is anytime like conflict would happen to me, like I just clam up and then I just want to just run away from the whole entire situation. So instead of like sitting down and talking feelings like a normal person would do, I have a really hard time doing that. And I think that this is also something that God is calling me to do in the step study because questions are coming about to where I need to like talk about my feelings. So, uh, you know, at seven o'clock, I'm going to be in a room full of women and I'm going to have to talk about my feelings in front of all of these people. And for me, that is so difficult to do because I am one that like struggles with that. I struggle with talking about my feelings. So, um, that is something that the Lord is definitely testing me on and challenging me. So I am ready to go through this um, process. I am so excited to do it. And I think that once I finally am able to get to a place to where I can comfortably talk about my feelings, it's like hand in hand. So I'm not going to be able to cope with my feelings by like eating a bunch of food now. Like I have to deal with my feelings. So that is something I'm definitely going to be working on. So the last question is in your family of origin, what was the family secret that everyone was trying to protect? So since this is a question that is personal to my family, I'm definitely not going to share it on the internet because I do have limits. Uh, there are some things that I'm not going to share. So um, maybe you can just answer that question for yourself if you want to, if you want to follow along with me with these questions. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this um, new, I guess, outlet I'm sharing with you guys, this new series I'm sharing with you guys, because I feel like the best thing I can do for myself in my recovery process is open my community up to this and get the support from you guys, because you have never failed me. This group of subscribers that I have here, you guys never fail me. You guys are so sweet sweetest comments, emails, messages, all sorts of things. And I have some really great support systems um, in my real life as well. My family and my closest friends, I love you guys all so much. And thank you guys so much for being so patient with me as I've been working this stuff out. As you know, like my, I just have not been in the right headspace probably the last six to nine months. And I think me coming out and sharing the struggle with you guys, I think is really gonna kind of get you to understand like, where I was in my life the last six, nine months. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. So while you're watching this, like I mentioned, I will be in step study. So if you guys can say a prayer for me, if there's anything you want to um, add in the comment section below, if there's something that you would like us to pray for, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below so that we can all be praying for each other. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will talk to you guys all later. Bye guys.